Hello once again, everyone. Ketta Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lover Reporter, here to give you my monthly update of uh, the latest uh, U.S. home building data and correlate that with my lumber prices. As you know, the Housing Starts information comes out once a month for the previous month. So here at the end of October, we've got uh, September and my lumber prices, they come out every week for that week. And so uh, let's get into it. But first, I'm going to ask you to click subscribe here uh, on my YouTube uh, to be able to see these videos that I make when they come out. But more importantly, go through the link to my website, madisonsreport.com. Click subscribe there at the top menu to get a sample of my full lumber price data, 450 individual commodities tracked every week. And then you can see the information that we, the whole scope of the information that we publish, not just these tiny morsels that I put when I write for my website or make for a YouTube. So the housing uh, starts and permits in the U.S., there's, you know, some waffling up and down uh, compared to August. But in general, total housing starts uh, compared to one year ago and total permits as well as one unit meaning single family starts and permits are generally speaking flat compared to September of last year and so we know that 2020 was not a normal year we know that there was a lot of home buying activity new homes there was new construction and there was rebuilding and remodeling of existing homes as people were making the adjustments to the new uh, working arrangements that uh, due to the COVID pandemic. So now, you know, sort of a year and a half later where we're ostensibly moving toward back to normal, of course, normal is going to be different than what we had before is normal, but definitely not like lockdowns and all these kind of things that we have had uh, for the uh, year following February 2020. Um, those of you who have watched my videos before, remember that I was saying at the end of 2019, and 2019 was not a good year for U.S. home building, it was quite slow, and in that uh, same way, lumber prices were quite flat throughout the entire year. 2018 was a good year. But at the end of 2019, we could see that demand was picking up, housing activity was getting stronger, and lumber prices were starting to go up, uh, sales volumes were increasing. Then at the beginning of last year, January and February 2020, housing construction data was looking really good. And a lot of the reason for that is, well, there's two reasons. One is the general macroeconomic macroeconomic cycle which goes on six quarters or every year and a half you know housing goes up and down that's completely normal and then the other thing was demographics as we have the millennials the uh, single largest generation right now um, and the largest cohort of uh, first-time home buying are approaching the age uh, the first wave of millennials are uh, over 30, turning 35, and are entering the home building, home buying market. And so that's going to be about 15 years worth of people. So without all of the um, changes that happened last year, we knew that 2020 and probably first half of 2021 housing activity was going to be good. So now it's, it's kind of hard to parse out the data, we're going to need, you know, more months to happen and be able to have some hindsight to really see what was going on. So um, let me just show you some other graphs and table here and check back often. Like I said, subscribe here on my YouTube, go to my website, madisonsreport.com, subscribe to the actual newsletter. You can order a sample, you'll get the whole weekly list. Um, of the prices and what the prices are right now and the market commentary of all these things I talk about, you know, order files, inventory, log supply, supply chain, all that kind of stuff. And um, instead of just waiting for a month and seeing this tiny snippet of data that I explain, you'll get all of the data that week when it comes out. Okay, so this is uh, for September 2021, which just came out last week. The black line at the top is total uh, housing starts 
the gray line is single family one unit housing starts and then the three colored lines are the uh, benchmark two by four lumber prices i would say that though especially the black line those sharp up and downs that you see in um earlier this year follows pretty closely where the lumber prices were and i would expect that to continue going forward into the end of this year so this again is the benchmark western spruce two by four lumber price uh, the blue line is this year if you look at the end of that blue line coming very close to the yellow line which is last year same price i would say next week check with us on friday and see if i'm right so and now we have uh, most interesting for forestry and sawmilling because the single family housing starts are the largest component of all home building and use the most wood so uh, once again the black line is uh, one unit housing starts and this time the gray line is one unit housing permits those two are a lot more consistent letting you know that the permits that you see in a press release will indicate to you really well in two months what the single family housing starts are going to be the three colored lines are the lumber prices right and so those graphs tell you a really good story Obviously, we're going to need um, a few more months to play out before we can really say what is happening. Um, but the correlation between the lumber prices and the uh, housing activity is looking really good. And since my lumber price data is, you know, six weeks ahead of when the uh, housing starts uh, releases are, uh, I have a lot of confidence in the information being able to give uh, people a really good uh, idea of what to expect like in the next month and a half, like going forward for the next housing starts when it comes out uh, next month for October. And then of course, at the end of the year for next month, right? Now, among this uh, data, there's some really interesting uh, situations that are developing, which um, are sort of, historically haven't or at least you know in the last uh generation like 15 20 years have not been like that so let me just tell you about what's happening there we have backlogs um single family so one unit remember i always say single family housing is the largest proportion of all home building and uses the most wood so i really look closely at single family like one unit starts to and permits to let people know um, what's happening with the lumber, you know, where it's going, all that kind of stuff. Backlogs of single family units authorized but not yet started is at a 15 year high right now. Um, I'm going to suspect that a lot of the reason for that is difficulty in finding lots. We've been hearing from the home builders that finding lots to build on has been uh, hard over the past year, year and a half. Um, so we'll see what happens there. If they're willing to pay more, find marginalized areas that maybe previously were not that attractive, but now given the ep economics of house prices going up, maybe that will change. But for now, that's a truth that units authorized but not yet started is um, historically very high right now. The other thing is units under construction compared to those being completed is also high. It's the highest since 2007, um, which is a record high, record wide gap. There's a record wide gap between units that are under construction and units that have been completed right now for the October data, um, for the September data that it just came out. Um, and most of those are already sold. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's anything to tell you that housing is bullish, it's that. The house isn't finished and it's already sold. That's, that's pretty hee-haw, right? Um, the insight into that is, um, the reason for that is that's probably construction delays, which I'm going to put once again down to workers, both materials and workers being difficult to source and supply is low, can't get enough people to work on the job sites, can't get lumber fast enough. And so that's what we have that situation. Um, a separate 
uh, insight that uh, is not um, the census new house uh, sales and price data that I usually use, but there are other case chiller and these other um, sources. And what I'm seeing is that uh, the October 15th data said um, the housing inventory uh, of homes for sale is down 24% compared to one year ago. So 400, 424,000 units for sale compared to 554,000 a year ago. Down 55% compared to 2019 when it was 936,000. So remember I said 2019 was not a good year for home building. If there's a whole bunch of homes for sale, why would you need to build a new home? Why would you need to buy a new home? Just go get something, uh, it'll incur all those extra charges of uh, building a new house. 